Hello, I'm Bishop Philip. I'm the Bishop of Burnley, and it's really good to welcome you to the Church of England's Act of Worship for this week. I'm speaking to you from my back garden in Lancashire, but the place I'd love to be right now is Norfolk, and in particular the Shrine of Our Lady of Walsingham, where the youth pilgrimage should be beginning. Walsingham has been a place of pilgrimage since the year 1061. In that year, a woman called Rischeldis saw in a vision Mary's home in Nazareth, the place where Mary said yes to the angel and gave her life to God as she bore the child Jesus. Rischeldis built a replica of that house in her own village, and from that day Walsingham grew and grew as a place of pilgrimage. After the Reformation, the shrine was restored, and today hundreds of thousands of pilgrims of different Christian traditions flock to Walsingham each year to be inspired by Mary's yes and to offer their lives to bearing Jesus for the world. The Youth Pilgrimage is one of many events that the Shrine runs each year, but it's an especially precious one. It draws on the rich traditions of Walsingham and pilgrimage, but does so in a contemporary way, seeking to convey the gospel to young people, most of whom come from urban areas, so that they can respond just as Mary did. Our worship this morning will have something of the feel of the Youth Pilgrimage, We'll hear many young voices. The Eucharist will be celebrated in the Shrine Church by the administrator, Father Kevin Smith. The music will be provided by CJM, a worship group who enliven the youth pilgrimage each year. But before they bring us our opening hymn, let's hear from some of the young pilgrims themselves about what the youth pilgrimage means to them. Walsingham will always be my home. As a young pilgrim, I always seek to build on my faith and try to understand what my calling is. And Walsingham has been a part of this journey. Being on the Youth Pilgrimage Ministry team last year was undoubtedly one of the best moments of my life, which I will always want to revisit. We had an incredible team and supportive priest who worked with such joy and tireless devotion throughout the programme. It was endearing to see so many young pilgrims with an eagerness to learn more about their faith, from them running to have a spot at the front of the altar, to them fully partaking in workshops without hesitation. I could feel no sense of shyness about their actions, and this struck me as wow, well. we should approach our Father with such boldness, because he is ever so ready to meet us. For me, the youth pilgrimage was such an uplifting and exciting period, and it is my hope that every young Christian gets to experience it. The reason I love Walsingham is because you get to meet people your age who are like-minded and young Christians, and you don't always get that opportunity every day. I personally don't go to church all the time. I go to the odd service, but I never thought that it completely related to me and my age and kind of modern society. But when you come to Walsingham, you understand that Christianity can have so many different layers and you get to ask any questions that you might have had as a young Christian and you feel comfortable and the people in charge always make you feel kind of welcome to ask and talk about whatever topic and it's just a brilliant experience to meet people and make lifelong friends.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. I'd like to add my own word of welcome to, to that of Bishop Philip. It's a great joy to share with you in this Eucharistic celebration here at the Anglican Shrine of Our Lady of Walsingham in Norfolk. The gifts of God's Word and of the sacrament of the altar nourish and strengthen us as we seek to follow Christ in our daily lives. Let us then prepare to receive them by calling to mind our sins and asking our most gentle and loving Lord for mercy. In a dark and disfigured world, we have not held out the light of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In a hungry and despairing world, we have failed to share our bread. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. In a cold and loveless world, we have kept the love of God to ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Good. 
Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that through your most mighty protection both here and ever we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? and your labour for that which does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the people, a leader and a commander for the people. See. You shall call nations that you do not know you, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. Let us be to God.
open wide your hand, O Lord. You open wide your hand, O Lord. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great good goodness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. You, you open, open wide your hand, hand, O Lord. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. You, you open, open wide your hand, O Lord. Lord. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. You open wide your hand, O Lord. The Lord preserves all those who love him, but he destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name for ever and ever. You open wide your hand, O Lord. Alleluia. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard that Herod had beheaded John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowd to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces. Twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I remember when I was a teenager, I decided it was about time I earned some money. And so I got myself a job. A job which comprised delivering free advertising newspapers to the streets in the neighbourhood. Well, a few days later, I got home from school to find my mother looking white and aghast. The newspapers arrived, she said, they're in the garage. They were indeed in the garage. In fact, they were filling the garage from floor to ceiling pallet after pallet of these free newspapers. And along with them was a map, a map which showed the area I had to deliver the newspapers to and one which seemed to cover most of North London. I was horrified. I'd been confronted with an impossible job. Well, that day, as I looked at those newspapers, I felt, doubtless, exactly like the disciples felt in the passage of St Matthew's Gospel that Father Kevin has just read to us. They too were confronted with what seemed to be an impossible job. Jesus had been followed to a lonely place by a vast crowd. A crowd of 5,000 men plus women plus children, a huge multitude. Well, he teaches them. 
for the course of the day. But as it comes towards evening, the disciples say, Jesus, come on, the day is nearly over. Send the crowd away so they can find something to eat. And that's when Jesus gives them the impossible job. You feed them, he says. Sounds so simple, doesn't it? But what a crazy thing to say. All they've got is five loaves and two fish. How on earth can they feed a crowd of such huge size, some mere scraps? Well, the disciples need to learn something critical about the rhythm of the Christian life. Look what happens next. Jesus accepts this paltry offering of loaves and fish and he blesses it. And then, first of all, he feeds the disciples. After they've been fed, the disciples then go and feed the crowd. And they find that they can feed this vast crowd. There's enough food to satisfy their hunger. They can feed the crowd because Jesus has first fed them. And that's the lesson they needed to learn about the Christian life. Jesus feeds us so that we can feed the world. Jesus feeds us so that we can feed the world. The Shrine of Our Lady of Walsingham is, first of all, a place of feeding. Remember Mary, who's at its heart. She's the one who fed Jesus from her breast. And the young pilgrims who would so love to be gathering at Walsingham this week come, first of all, to be fed by Jesus, to be fed by Mary's child. They're fed by Jesus generously as they study the scriptures together. They're fed as they confess sin and pray for healing. They're fed in the community they form as they find Christian friendship and good fellowship. These mostly urban teenagers are fed also by the sheer beauty of creation in North Norfolk. And they're fed above all as they gather day by day for the Eucharist. These young pil pilgrims are fed abundantly by Jesus, who's the living bread. But if that were all, it would be pure self-indulgence. Walsingham isn't just a place of feeding, it's equally a place of sending. The most important thing any pilgrim on any pilgrimage does is to go home again. And that's the case for these young pilgrims. Having been fed by Jesus, they go home to feed a hungry world. And they do that by simply trying to live the Christian life more vividly, more confidently, living not for self but for service, putting faith into words, sharing the good news of Jesus. At Walsingham, Jesus feeds them so they can feed the world. We live today in a desperately hungry world. Many people hunger for justice because they're suffering because of the actions of others or from greed or from debt. Many people today hunger for forgiveness or for compassion. Many people hunger for purpose, desperate for something that will make sense of their lives and give them some idea of who they are and what they're for. And the thing that all these hungers have in common is that they can only be satisfied by Jesus, Jesus who is the living bread. Well, in a world of such hunger, Jesus points to us as he pointed to the disciples and he says, you feed them. Well, it just seems an impossible job, doesn't it? How can small bands of Christians hope to meet such immense global hunger? Well, remember the rhythm of the Christian life that the disciples had to learn. First of all, Jesus feeds us. If we open our hearts, Jesus feeds us in rich abundance. He feeds us when we meet with him in the scriptures. He feeds us in the bread and wine of the Eucharist. He feeds us in the joy of Christian fellowship. He feeds us in all those ways we meet him in our daily lives. Jesus feeds us. But he doesn't feed us for the sake of it. No, Jesus feeds us so that we can go and feed a hungry world. 
Whenever we put faith into practice, we're feeding the hungry. When we make a stand for justice, when we give voice to the voiceless and stand alongside the poor, we're feeding a hungry world. Whenever we seek to put faith into practice and tell people what matters to us and stand up for right, we're feeding a hungry world. Whenever we live, not for ourselves, but for others and seek to serve and meet need, we're feeding a hungry world. Whenever we show hospitality, compassion, joy to others, we're feeding a hungry world. Jesus feeds us so that we can feed the world. Today then, in our worship, let yourself be fed by Jesus. Allow him to enter anew into your heart and into your life. And then go. Go and feed a hungry world with him who is the living bread. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We know that the Lord hears us when we call, so let us come before him now with our prayers. Let us pray for the church throughout the world. We pray for all those who cannot worship freely. May all Christians be nourished by you, the true and living bread. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for places in our world and our own nation where there is conflict and unrest. Help us to be channels of your peace. Lord, hear us. Lord graciously hear us. We bring before you the young people and leaders who will join in the Walsingham Youth Pilgrimage at home this week. We pray that they be inspired by your word and be strengthened in faith and understanding. Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. Let us pray for our communities for those who are facing unemployment, for those returning to work, and for all our families during the summer. Protect them from all harm. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We bring before you all who will go hungry and thirsty this day, and we pray for all who are homeless. Help us to show your compassion and love towards all people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us ask God to be with all who are sick and dying, and all who care for them. May they know your healing love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray for all who have died. 
May they be welcomed into your eternal kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And let us ask Mary, Our Lady of Walsingham, to unite our prayers with hers as we join in the words of the angel and say, Heavenly Father, as we bring our prayers before you, we pray that, like Mary, we may always open our lives to your will. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God forever. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and, and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, 
these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When, when we, we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim, proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
let's stay free to move. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Let us pray. Strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears which have heard your word be deaf to clamour and dispute. May the tongues which, we, which have sung your praise be free from deceit. May the eyes which have seen the tokens of your love shine with the light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your body be refreshed with the fullness of your life. Glory to you for ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>